Israel is at war. We didn't want this war. It was forced upon us in the most brutal and savage way. Two days after Hamas fighters burst out of Gaza and carry out one of the most audacious attacks on Israeli territory, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office posts this video online. Hamas will understand that by attacking us, they've made a mistake of historic proportions. Within minutes, the message has thousands of shares and replies. Numerous Israeli posts demand Netanyahu's resignation. But there's another set of messages from Indians, and they are all in. So the responses from Indian accounts have been extraordinary, to say the least. Sometimes they put up posters in which they say, we stand with Israel. Sometimes they put graphics of two hands in a clasp painted with Israeli and Indian flags. Sometimes they've just tried to reflect on how this conflict in Gaza mirrors the kind of challenges that India faces security-wise. When we try to understand why is there such a widespread interest in India with respect to this particular conflict, one of the things is a shared experience of terrorism. When October 7 happened, Hamas's attack on Israel, in India almost immediately parallels were drawn with the 26-11 experience, which were a major terrorist attack happening on the Indian city of Mumbai in 2008. To me, it had a lot of shades of our own 26-11. Uh, when you had terrorists coming from Pakistan on boats and uh, uh, creating the rampage that they did. This major space that Israel suddenly started to occupy in the Indian imagination was because that common threat was found. The same radical, jihadist, Islamist, terrorist thinking that Israel is a victim of, we are a victim of as well. Israel is fighting this war on behalf of all of us. Israel is fighting this war for you and me. New Delhi's support for Israel was swift and unequivocal. Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeted in solidarity, and Indian news outlets, as though on cue, went on a war footing themselves. Channels that, just a few months earlier, had not seen fit to send their journalists to cover unprecedented violence in India's northeastern state of Manipur, they dispatched reporters all the way to Israel. Heavy bombs uh, are, are being used right now to take out the Hamas leadership and, you know, there is collateral damage. Proclamations of vengeance and calls for mass killing were issued from Indian news studios. Aapki policy wo honi chahiye, 1,000 for 1. Agar aapke hazar Israel ke bachche shaheed hoi hai, to unke the coverage, I think, has been extremely sensationalist and dramatic. There was a reporter who was asked to quiet down by Israeli soldiers because of how loudly he was trying to cover what was happening. Then there's another reporter from a channel who was reporting from a paraglider. After reports came out that Hamas crossed the border on paragliders. There's also been uh, misinformation shared by Indian news channel. There was a video of a group of people carrying what looked like a dead body. But when they put down the person, the person got up and walked away. So this uh, video was shared with the claim that uh, Palestinians are faking the death of the victims. But this video turned out to be from 2020 and it was shot in Jordan uh, during COVID lockdown and it was by a bunch of people who were trying to flout the, the lockdown rules. Whereas in the past, Israelis would send out disinformation or their talking points and they, they would land on you know, American and British mainstream media platforms. Now you have large Indian accounts amplifying this. Just a few days ago, a BJP leader addressed a rally and he invented a set of, of his own lies. And then lamented about the kind of small pockets of support that some Indian Muslims have shown or displayed for Palestinians uh, in India. And he asked them, do you want Hamas to come to India? This is how hate and misinformation works. You keep repeating something again and again and again that, you know, there is Islamic terror and how Israel is trying to protect itself. And then there is a Muslim threat in India and how Hindus are trying to protect themselves. And if you keep repeating this, there comes a time when 
people who are consuming this or who may be misinformed when they see that Muslims are treated with a lot of violence, they can one, justify it, or two, just say that they deserve it. So what happens is that you take away how a normal human being would react to someone who is facing violence. And this is essentially what hate and disinformation achieves. Modern day India and the state of Israel came into being within a year of each other. India through its independence from British rule in 1947, Israel through its expulsion of Palestinians and the establishment of the state in 1948. On the question of Palestine, India's independence leaders Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru, they were vocal in their support. In 1936, when Palestinians rose up against the British and their push for a Jewish state, Nehru compared Palestine with India under colonial rule. He talked about a gross betrayal of the Arabs by British imperialism. Palestine was not an empty land. It was well populated with little room for large numbers of colonists. Is it any wonder that the Arabs objected to this intrusion? A little more than 10 years later, when the United Nations voted to create the State of Israel, there were only three non-Arab countries that voted against that resolution. India was one of them. Times have changed, so have the geopolitics. Historically speaking, I mean, I'm referring to the post-1947 era, which is when we got independent, India and Israel haven't really had a very nice or cozy relationship that you probably see now. That has come after 2014, which is when Prime Minister Modi has come to power. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> oh, what a great... Great day. Great day. And of course, one of the reasons is that both these countries have nationalistic governments and that perhaps is one of the ideological uh, reasons why, uh, you know, the relationship has taken off. So relations between, you know, India and Israel did not start with Narendra Modi. But what happens in 2014 is Modi and Netanyahu meet properly, officially at the UN General Assembly in New York. And they agree at that moment to, quote, tear down the remaining walls between the two countries. India purchases around 50% of all weapons sold by Israel per year. And India is also beginning to co-produce weapons and they're working in agriculture, they're working in tech, they're working in cybersecurity. 2017 was the first time that an Indian Prime Minister actually traveled to Israel. And you see a kind of an um, you know, upgrade in the relations ever since. Hindustan and Israel are the two brothers of such a country who have taken the time at the same time of freedom. And after 70 years of freedom, when the first step of Israel's 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 first step. In the past month, India has reaffirmed its support for the establishment of a Palestinian state the so-called two-state solution. Uh, towards establishing a sovereign, independent and viable state of Palestine. New Delhi has also sent medical and disaster relief aid to Gazans. How much of that made it past the Israeli blockade and into the Strip is not known. The war is a big story in India. And as it rages on, it is folding into another, even bigger domestic story. India is going into a huge election next year. And this issue will serve as a way to consolidate the Hindu nationalist base in India. It serves Modi very well electorally to be seen as close to Israel, as a country that's able to put Muslims in their place. But it's also about modernizing the state. The BJP has pushed this narrative that in order to be a strong, militaristic, global player, it had to be close to Israel. All this rhetoric around minorities and the domestic sentiment with respect to minorities, I think it is really not understood well. And it is often, you know, foreign media that falls for a certain kind of narrative. And that leads to a rather skewed understanding of how Indian societies actually operate. I think it is too soon to tell how this war with will play out when it comes to um, elections in India next year. But there are already posts that are claiming, you know, you have to stand up against Islamic terrorism. Otherwise, what would happen in India is what is happening in Israel. So for Hindus to protect themselves from this threat is to re-elect Prime Minister Modi.